All right, what we got? What was your assessment of Jalen tonight, Randy? <laughs> <laughs> Is it true Gump stays in your stomach for 12 years like my mom used to tell me? <laughs> oh, Randy Sanders, always trust what your mother says. Why do you even question your mother's wisdom or the wisdom of these two guys? Yeah, Welcome absolutely. to the Red and Blue Review. We are talking a little football. A lot of excitement in Lexington. It just didn't last long enough. Yeah. Very little excitement in Southern Miss until the last <laughs> half. We'll get into all of that stuff, but please say hello to Daryl Bird of the Cats Paws. With a take on Louisville mm -hmm. this Sunday. You've heard me talk on this show before that, that God, obviously, is a U.K. fan. The sky is blue. Everything associated with Louisville is red. Look at their games. They played last night in a hurricane, in a flood. They played in a hurricane. They played in a flood. The game, at, the game at Pitt is locust. locust. Watch out. Locusts. If frogs start falling, we're in trouble. <laughs> and the uh, chief mocker of uh, Big Blue Nation is Howie Lindsay of the Louisville Sports Report. Oh, how about them cats, huh? Yes, sir. Uh, they, they stayed with them for, for a half, and actually, it, it made it even worse. This is vintage Kentucky football. Made it even worse because it got your fans. Uh, it, there's hope springing, yeah. and everybody's yeah. thinking, this could be, be over. We're going to beat South Carolina. It's going to happen. Gonna <laughs> gonna happen. <laughs> People got in their cars in Louisville and started driving towards yeah. Commonwealth Stadium only to hear it slowly slip away <laughs> all through the second half. Or quickly. Oh, it's brutal. Brutal. <laughs> we'll talk about it right now as we go into our game time storyline. Our lightning round on the Red and Blue Review is brought to you by the Kentucky Office of Highway Safety, reminding you to share the road with those motorcycles. Well, our big man on campus for Kentucky this week is the freshman, Jalen Whitnell. Now, I don't know if you knew the story, but uh, the starter, Max Smith, lasted two plays. South Carolina knocked him out of the game. Whitlow came into the game basically on the Kentucky zero-yard line, marched him up to uh, get a field goal out of the deal and to a 17-7 lead. But he was really improvising out there. In fact, offensive coordinator Randy Sanders says the kid was just making up plays. We ran some plays out there I've never seen before. <laughs> you know, and, 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 and the crazy thing was he was able to scramble and make some plays on a few of them. It was difficult because uh, they were coming. They were sending pressure and uh, tried to stay in there. I was holding on to the ball a little too long. Uh, just got to check down a couple times. Missed them, but just got just to gotta stay focused, stay in there, and just do what I can. Yeah, I think the kid did a tremendous job. You got to put yourself in this situation. Here's where I'm coming from. It, on Monday of last week, Jalen Whitlow thinks, hmm, I might play. Max's shoulder's banged up. By the end of the week, Max is 100%. He's good to go. Whitlow's like, Okay, well, I'm not going to play. Two plays in, here you go. Here comes the call, son. Get out there. To ride that roller coaster, and Randy Sanders told me afterwards, that is the, um, the emotionally, the mentally most difficult position on the team is backup quarterback because you have to prepare as if you're going to play, knowing in the back of your mind you ain't playing unless there's an injury. And to be able, for a freshman, to be able to make sure they stay in the game so they're ready to go is a really tough challenge. And, and yeah, he was making stuff up on the fly, and he, he had a couple of runs where – Hmm, I got away with this in high school. Mm -hmm. He didn't come close yeah. to getting away for those sideway runs against South Carolina. That ain't happening, son. Those big guys with the nines on the front can run faster than those safeties you saw in high school. So, Darrell, what is his skill set? Because we we yep. got a kind of a glimpse of it. Whether he's a you know is he a wildcat? Yep. Or, what will they actually use him to do? Do you think? Can I can I say this carefully? Yes. He's Morgan Newton. Uh oh, not in a bad way. Oh, there are two kinds of quarterbacks in this mm -hmm. world. There are pro style, drop in the pocket. Read it, pass mm -hmm. it. That's Max Smith. Yeah. That's Patrick Tolles. The other is a dual threat. Morgan Newton, Jalen Whitlow. I can make the pass, but if I have to, I can take off running. Yeah. And that's, that's effective. It's just not the way UK's offense is built right now, and they're going to have to scramble to rework that offense to fit Whitlow's skill set instead of Max Smith's skill set. Yeah. And that's where the debate comes in. Maybe we should take the red shirt off tolls because the skill sets are the same. Yeah, we'll get into that yeah. one in, in just a bit. The big man on campus at the University of Louisville is that rushing attack against Southern Miss. I know the Cards wanted to throw the football. They had to figure out how to run it, and run it they did. Well, Teddy's an outstanding player, but if you watch our whole offense, we were able to run the football, and our backs were able to run behind their pads and go score some touchdowns. <laughs> Louisville's rushing attack was really everything that was working. Granted, Teddy Bridgewater had some early success throwing the football, but as the rain came down and the water that they were playing in came up, you're just not going to be able to throw the football effectively. So finally, Louisville figured out that, okay, we're just going to hand it to our workhorse backs and let them go. Uh, now, it didn't always work. You just saw that. Uh, but Sonoris Perry just battled, battled for yards, battled to get into the end zone. 
Uh, a tremendous run right here where he just stayed on his feet, kept going, kept going, kept going. After the game, he said, I didn't. Re I was trying to find my footing, and I ended up in the end zone. So, <laughs> I mean, that's essentially how it was for Louisville. The rushing attack, at, at, at one point, uh, you know, Southern Miss coach Ellis Johnson was like, we couldn't pass the ball. Mm -hmm. So you just, they, yeah. they finished the first half without a passing yard. Well, the Cats got busted in the second half of their football game. The first half against South Carolina was fantastic as Kentucky built a two-score lead heading into halftime. But in the second half, that all came apart. We, I want them to take it. We've got to play 60 minutes. I mean, you know, when you, you're as young as a football team is ours, and, you know, you're playing against the number eight team in the country, and you have to do, you have to play clean. Okay, you have to play fast, you have to play with great effort, which I thought we did, but you got to do it for 60 minutes, you know. We did it for, for, for about, you know, 35 minutes, you know, and, uh, and uh, you know, then they took, char took, took over, you know, and took the momentum, and then we never got it back. Yeah, it was interesting to watch. My fear going in, I watched them go in at halftime, and they were just on a cloud, and I thought, wow. How is Joker going to get them off the cloud and get them down to earth? These so many young players, true freshmen to true freshmen on a lot of those big plays, they've got to get them down and realize you've got 30 minutes against one of the best teams in the country left. They're coming at you, and it just didn't happen. They weren't ready for it. On the other side, give Steve Spurrier credit. Me and Mr. Fun and Gun passing game said, hmm, 21's a pretty decent running back. I think we'll let him have it every single <laughs> carry is what it felt like. Just a battering ram. Just, they had no answer for that. And it's funny, we talked about on the show last week that Lattimore we're not even mentioning. We're mm -hmm. talking D-line, we're talking the quarterback who runs around. Everybody kind of forgets Lattimore. The dude is a stud. He's going to be in the league. I got down on the field and had a chance to really watch that kid play. When he puts his toe in the ground, as yep. football guys say, he is a horse. Yes, I mean, that guy is an SEC slash NFL caliber running back. He's better than anybody in Kentucky. He guy. is a Trent Richardson yeah. that, that doesn't get that kind of notoriety. Well, we talked about the fact that uh, if that second half was big. Darrell, I think if Kentucky wins that game last night, they play a second half that's close mm -hmm. to what they played in the first half, all the talk about Joker's tenure at Kentucky ends. I think sure he does. saves his season with a better second half. He say, he, if they win, he saves his season. Mm -hmm. He saves his job. There's no doubt about it. To me, it's really muddied the water. It's like yeah. you saw a glimpse, well, maybe he does deserve another year. Mm -hmm. And then the way it fell apart in the second half, I think it's just muddier now than it even was. I think he did make strides, but it's still – very murky. Mississippi State's coming up. Arkansas's coming up. There's, there, you'll have your answers there. Yeah. Well, Kentucky started fast, failed to finish. Louisville started slow and finished well. Oh, well, you know what we did. We came out the second half and we played, and we knew this, that we had to weather this storm and these bad conditions, but we were able to run the ball and, and just stay patient. And, and that was Charlie Strong after the game talking about his team needing to stay patient. I'm sure the coaches had to stay a little patient, too, mm -hmm. because they'd called a whole bunch of plays that had no chance of working. I mean, in, in that kind of slop and mess, had no chance of working. They, they gave up that uh, pick six early in the game, and then conditions worsened and worsened and worsened. Uh, but give a little credit. They came back in the second half. The defense actually played very, very well. But if you add it up, you know, before this game, Charlie Strong said we played six quarters of bad football. Yep. We add two more quarters in this first half. Mm -hmm. That's eight straight quarters of not very good football. And really, the last two quarters, I thought Louisville played well. So maybe it's a return to what Louisville should look like. Eight bad quarters of football and no losses in the eight quarters. That's the key piece of it. It is very key. You're 5-0 yep. and oh, moving into conference play. Well, let me tell you what's nuts. I'm at uh, Commonwealth Stadium. Kentucky, outmanned, is getting ready to take the field against top ten South Carolina. And what's playing up on the big video screens? A tutorial to show the fans how to make a mass evacuation out of the stadium. <laughs> Please follow directions of security and event staff personnel who will be available to guide and assist you as you walk calmly out and away from the facility. Daryl, if there's any fan base in America that knows how to get out of a stadium, it's those guys. <laughs> I, I have never seen that. All the times I've been there, I'm sure it's some 9-11 preparedness you have to do. But yeah. That is hilarious. <laughs> you got the old guy in the blue suit. He's like he's backing up a semi. Come on yeah. back, come on back, come on back, come on back. <laughs> You're right. And at the end of the day, they, they played South Carolina tough for a half. They had everybody fired up. Mm -hmm. I like how I think everybody's squealing their tires trying to get there. In the end, you, you lose it. A lot of empty seats regardless. And that's a start. The upper deck had fewer people than any game this year. 
and that's because they were expecting South Carolina to win 50 to nothing. Yep. That's going to be the determining factor, I'm afraid, for all said and done. Yeah, it really not so much how soon do the fans leave the game they tend, it's how many that show up to start mm -hmm. with. And that's what's really going to determine whether Joker stays or goes. Yeah, he can probably keep his job if they can get some huge wins, mm -hmm. but those huge wins have got to, to in turn relate to the fact that people start coming back to Commonwealth. Tough situation. Joker just can't catch a break. Mississippi State's coming in next week. Mm -hmm. They're good. They're like number 19. They finally get a day game. It's 12 o'clock. Guess what it is? It's the opening weekend of Keeneland. Yep. Are you kidding me? You can't catch a break. Well, the one break they did catch is Mississippi State is probably better than they anticipated, but obviously with John L. Smith, Arkansas is a lot worse. Yeah. So if you thought of it, you're going to be in one of those two games, you've got a shot maybe now at Arkansas and yeah. maybe not against Mississippi State. Yeah, you could State. win both those games, yeah. potentially. You do have to go on the road, and, and I know the U.K. fans have volunteered to help Charlie find a house when they go to Arkansas. That's <laughs> yeah. so when, when he leaves for that job. Yeah. They'll help. Well, the University of Louisville football team plays on ESPN, but they probably should play on the Weather Channel. <laughs> Welcome to Lake Hattiesburg, right here on the campus of the University of Southern Miss. At the end of this game, you, you see there, that, that's about <laughs> halftime, right? Oh, uh, Second quarter, midway through the second quarter. Uh, third and fourth quarter, uh, Southern Miss's sideline, the players are in ankle-deep water, just standing in ankle-deep water. Their cleats are completely underwater. The Louisville players are tweeting after the game, I will never, uh, uh, these are all these Florida kids, right, yeah. and, and Kentucky kids saying, I will never, ever, ever, ever go back to Mississippi again. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys, you're not alone. A lot of people have that same kind of experience for yeah. different reasons in Mississippi. They're like, I'll never go back to Mississippi ever again. Well, let's review the weather. The, the season opening against Kentucky, right. the remnants of a hurricane are blowing through. Yeah, yeah. It storms all day in South Florida for the Florida International game, and then the monsoon against Southern Miss. It, next Louisville home game, Captain Dan's going to strap himself to the goalpost and say, <laughs> bring it on! <laughs> <laughs> when we come back here on the Red and Blue Review, we'll tell you why the turning point in Kentucky losing to South Carolina is being blamed for the coaches, but it's not their fault. As we head to the break, this guy's going to tell us about the brand new Cats Balls basketball year. Do appreciate it very much. At the press, hope to have it back October 5th, 6th, 7th, somewhere in that ballpark. 368 pages previewing the season. In line for nine, obviously a hint to that this team could make a run at title number nine. We will see. I know a lot of preseason magazines have been predicted into the Final Four, along with Louisville and Indiana, which would be fascinating to say the least. You can order easily by going to shopcatspaws.com. If you're like me, you're dreading the thought of higher energy costs this season. That's why I call my friends at Doug Jones Home Improvement, who's been doing quality work at a fair price for over 40 years. Doug Jones Home Improvement offers maintenance-free replacement windows, insulated vinyl siding, and airtight entry doors. They're priced fairly with no high-pressure sales tactics or hidden fees. Doug Jones Home Improvement prides itself on keeping the weather outside while keeping you comfortable inside. For a free estimate, call us at 366-0291. It's Chevy Truck Month, and now is the time to get your new truck. Bachman has more Chevy trucks than any other dealer, all at fantastic prices. You'll get every Chevy incentive plus exclusive Bachman discounts during Chevy Truck Month. Tremendous selection of Silverados and every dependable Chevy truck. Plus, you save more during Chevy Truck Month with exclusive Bachman discounts. All Chevrolets are created equal. Bachman makes the difference. People don't realize how dangerous speeding can be. The lower limits you see posted in school zones are there for a reason. So when the unexpected happens, you have time to stop. Because even 5 or 10 miles over the limit can mean the difference between a near miss and a hit. Stop speeding before it stops you. See Allison at lunch today? Oh I'm gonna text her. I'm gonna text Allison. Hey, hold up, Matt's calling me. Matt's calling me. Hey, we got, hey, we got the food and we're on our way right now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, who's coming, bro? Join the club at Sam Swope Auto Group. When you service a vehicle at any Sam Swope dealership, you automatically become a Service VIP Rewards member. You get member pricing on parts and service, lost key return, and emergency roadside assistance. 
Plus, you can earn points that qualify you for discounts on your next vehicle purchase, up to $2,500. The best part is becoming a member is free. Become a member today at any Sam Swope dealership. Nobody walks away because everybody saves. But uh, it's, a, it's a big boys game we're playing right now, and it's a big boy league we play in. And until we can play that way, our results won't change. So we've got to get more physical at the point. Big boy game here too, Coach. Welcome back to the Red and Blue Review. We're going to look uh, into that Kentucky loss and the Louisville win in our game time storylines. Hey, the Kentucky State Police remind you, when you are out on the highway, leave more space for trucks. Because if you try to cut those guys off, that is an opportunity that you are going to lose. Welcome back to the Red and Blue Review. Topic number one is Kentucky can't stop the run. South Carolina was held to only 26 yards rushing in the first half, but the Cats were gouged for over 200 in the second. And Rick Minter says they just decided to line up, South Carolina did, and shove it down the Wildcats' throats. Same thing that Florida did in the second half, same thing that Western Kentucky did, you know, same thing that uh, Louisville did. So we haven't changed much, unfortunately. You know, we're still that same defense that plays pretty good in spurts. Uh, tonight, we played really well the first half, executing our game plan pretty much to the hill of the things that our guys knew very well they were going to run. And you got to realize they'd only run like two powers in 300 snaps. Now we got them a lot of work on it tonight. You know, they just said, screw it. We're going to line up and run right at these, you know, these fellows because we've seen everybody else do it, you know, down at Florida, right on down the line. So we just got to get better at that. Part of it is strength, size. Part of it is, you know, a call or two here or there. Part of it is youth and experience. Yeah, other than that, it, it, things were going well. I saw <laughs> those things he mentioned. But you're right. It, it doesn't hurt your South Carolina. You're ranked number six, and you've got Marcus Lattimore. But... They just ran it down their throats. Why they do it in the first half, I have no idea what Spurrier was thinking. But second half, they did. Mr. Cobble did not play in this game, one of the good defensive tackles. And they played what I saw. They played really well. They have to be emotionally fired up to play really well on defense to make up for what they're lacking in other phases of the game. And it happened in the first half, and the offense was helping. Once the offense was gone, three and out, three and out, and you're sticking those guys out there time after time after time against South Carolina, it just wasn't going to work. The offense had to help out. The offense has to help this group keep them off the field more than what they did in that second half. Darrell, it sounds like what Rick was saying, though. There's no easy fix for this team. No. It's not as though somebody's not trying or they're out of position. That sounded like something they're going to deal with all season is trying to stop the run. Well, they point. are going to deal with it. You saw there was one play that jumped out to me. Uh, Shaw dropped back. Mm -hmm. Here comes Khalid Henderson flying, and he's going to drop him for a 12-yard loss. Little move, yep. and he misses. Mm -hmm. And that's a true freshman making the mistake. He, the play was called beautifully. You're going to drop him for a 12-yard loss, and you just mess up at the end. And they've got a lot of young guys back there. Everybody focuses on all those true freshman skill players. There's a lot of true freshmen on the defensive side, too. Well, Louisville showed some true grit in that win against Southern Miss. They went into the final quarter trailing by two, but they hopped on the bus heading home after winning by four. Well, it's a young ball club, but it just speaks volumes of our football team and just them continue to play hard. <laughs> I was extremely impressed with Louisville's second half performance. Uh, they, in those kind of conditions, mm -hmm. against a, you know, on the road, you know, it's raining on your head, your feet are in water, you're playing awful. I mean, it, it's it would be easy to say, you know, I'm getting back on the bus, let's go home. <laughs> uh, but they didn't. The defense actually stiffened its back and and you know got back at, at Southern Miss. Louisville uh, left all the excuses on the field down there for Southern Miss. I mean, it's, yeah, they could they could have come home and had all the excuses in the world. Yeah, they, they didn't do it. They were not able to use their best weapon. Right. Uh, Teddy couldn't really throw the ball, uh, mm -hmm. so they went in there without their best game and still found a way to win. Uh, it's very impressive. Yeah, it, it is a gritty win. I I was I was debating between gritty and soggy. Soggy would probably be a better <laughs> soggy win. How about that? One of the other topics we're kicking around after that Kentucky loss is what happened in the final seconds of the first half. Now, the coaches are catching some heat for Kentucky blocking the punt against South Carolina, but not getting any points on the board. Uh, but the blame for this really does not belong with the coaches. We did, no doubt about that. We missed a huge opportunity, you know. I mean, you get, get some points, you know. Uh, we missed, and, and we had our field goal team ready to run out on the field. You know, we, we, we you know, didn't anticipate taking, you know, fumbling the ball. And now it's 
from for the ball and we pick it up and you know and now it's only two or three seconds left you know instead of you know um, 10 or 12 you know so we, we missed a huge opportunity to get points and, can, and and I think that was a momentum swing it was it was a huge momentum swing we got the ball out back in the second half and uh, I think it would have definitely helped if we got some points out of that. I may be in the minority I'm not making that huge of a deal out of what happened it, you've got a true freshman quarterback he didn't quite understand what they were trying to call, and, and some of the, his other true freshman receivers weren't getting a gra grip on what they were trying to run, so they ended up botching it completely. And, and a, right there, an experienced quarterback calls timeout immediately. Mm -hmm. He doesn't stare at the coach for 15 seconds, and then they finally have to call timeout, yeah. and you've lost your chance. Uh, to me, yes, they were head 17-7. to 7. It would have been 24-7, to 7, but they were still on an incredible emotional high right there from just from being on top. I thought more important was the drive to open the second half when mm -hmm. they got the ball back and did absolutely nothing with it. That's, to me, when the entire momentum swung against UK. Yeah, it would have been nice to score here to get something, but they were still riding extremely high the way they played in the first half. Well, they gave up 31 unanswered points yes. in the second half. That did not really matter. That The game did not teeter on that. No. And I think, to your point, Daryl, it's an inexperienced quarterback. You hate to throw a kid under the bus there, but the fact is you've got a kid that was playing high school football this time last year. Mm -hmm. He's in that kind of situation. You just have to have experience to know how to do it, and that's unfortunately how you get it. Yeah, and then on top of that, the situation mm -hmm. was when they finally – got the timeout caught, and then he fumbles. Yep. If he just gets tackled, you've got time to run your team out there or to spike it. Yeah. No, it gets kicked around forever, and then by that time, you don't score, you miss it by a yard, and then you're also out of time. Too bad. Louisville quarterback uh, Teddy Bridgewater, number six on the ESPN polling for the Heisman. Now, he's not going to win it this year, but talking about him this year gives him some chances in the future. I think I think Teddy I, I think Teddy belongs there because if you look at the season that he's having, you know I don't know how many I mean I don't really see how many players are playing that well across the country, but Teddy Bridgewater play, is playing very well, and uh, if, you, if you watch his throws, he's making the right throws, and I know he gave up two there on uh, the one guy made an unbelievable break on the on the one that he hung out there. I think if he had it roped it to Gaines, it would have been over because Gaines had the guy beat by about 10 or 15 yards. And then the second one, just you know, receiver doesn't get away. But, but he he's playing very well. And the thing you like about Teddy is he's so poised, and and he's one of he's one of those guys where this doesn't really phase him. He he's not he's not caught up in. A lot of players get they get caught up in this moment. He's not even caught up in it. He knows that he has to improve. And, and when you have one of your best players knowing they have to improve, then everyone else around him know they have to improve. And that's and that's why you like Teddy Bridgewater. For more information on Teddy Bridgewater and the Cardinals, check out the Louisville Sports Report. LouisvilleSportsNews.com is where you can leave, read the online version. Uh, you can also get it delivered to your home, 502-636-4330. If you're like me, you're dreading the thought of higher energy costs this season. That's why I call my friends at Doug Jones Home Improvement, who's been doing quality work at a fair price for over 40 years. Doug Jones Home Improvement offers maintenance-free replacement windows, insulated vinyl siding, and airtight entry doors. They're priced fairly with no high-pressure sales tactics or hidden fees. Doug Jones Home Improvement prides itself on keeping the weather outside while keeping you comfortable inside. For a free estimate, call us at 366-0291. It's Chevy Truck Month, and now is the time to get your new truck. Bachman has more Chevy trucks than any other dealer, all at fantastic prices. You'll get every Chevy incentive plus exclusive Bachman discounts during Chevy Truck Month. Tremendous selection of Silverados and every dependable Chevy truck. Plus, you save more during Chevy Truck Month with exclusive Bachman discounts. All Chevrolets are created equal. Bachman makes the difference. Underage drinking can permanently affect your memory and speech abilities. 10% of suicides involve underage drinking. 36% of homicides involve underage drinking. 30% of drownings involve underage drinking. Almost half of underage drinkers become addicted. Don't throw your life away. Did you see Allison at lunch today? Oh I'm, gonna text her. I'm gonna text Allison. Hey, hold up, Matt's calling me, Matt's calling me. Hey, we got, hey, we got the food and we're on our way right now. <laughs> hey, who's coming, bro? Hey, 
Join the club at Sam Swope Auto Group. When you service a vehicle at any Sam Swope dealership, you automatically become a Service VIP Rewards member. You get member pricing on parts and service, lost key return, and emergency roadside assistance. Plus, you can earn points that qualify you for discounts on your next vehicle purchase, up to $2,500. The best part is becoming a member is free. Become a member today at any Sam Swope dealership. Nobody walks away because everybody saves. Well, with Max Smith sidelined and Morgan Newton ineffective, you'd think this would be the time for Patrick Tolles to have that red shirt ripped off, but Joker's not convinced he's going to do it. Again, we won't do that and, and, unless, um, you know, Max is out for a while. And then also we won't do it unless we're going to play him. You know, at this point in time, it's no, no sense of taking it off of him if, you're not going, if he's not going to play a significant match. Clearly, they're not going to take it off immediately because they've already said they're going to change the offense dramatically to fit Whitlow's skills. Fan base has already noticed, as much as Whitlow likes to run in the SEC, he's going to get killed. So you're <laughs> going to have to put tolls in at some point if everybody else is hurt. So that's the debate. I guess they're just going to let it play out and see how Jalen does. Well, that would be tough if you've got both your freshmen and they burn a year yep. uh, this freshman year. That's going to make it really tough recruiting heading forward. Now, daryl has got Mississippi State coming up uh, this week uh, in Lexington. you got the weekend off. Absolutely. Bye week for Louisville, which yeah. would be good because they're going to have to all get over the flu bug, right, <laughs> after playing in the mud and rain and all that. And uh, they'll have to wring out their socks yes. and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> hey, thanks for joining us here this week on the Red and Blue Review. We're going to continue to follow these guys and see if they can get – a national championship contender, maybe undefeated? Let's see.